and my question. We're starting right now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Eagle's Nest as we get you set for this Ontario Major Little League baseball game between the Perth Royals and the East Nepean Eagles. We just got through a pretty long rain delay. They're still getting the field ready to go. The skies are blue, the sun is out, and we are all set for a great night of baseball. My name is Colin Zappia, along with Brett Chewett. And Brett, some interesting games yesterday. East Nepean involved in a very close one, and it was an exciting one for everyone here in attendance. Yeah, they, uh, they, they've they played that team uh, uh, this year. It's been some close games that they've played so far. At, you said before there, Colin, at the start of the game, when we showed up here, you know, 4 o'clock today, it did not look like there was going to be a game on the field uh, today because it was just covered in rain. You couldn't believe how much water was out there. You could see second base just in the corner, kind of the middle of your screen, I guess, right now. Everything else was water. So the phenomenal job they did out here, they had uh, buckets out. They were scooping out all the water to get the conditions ready. Uh, um, Bill, the head groundskeeper, came with all the buckets out, and everyone was helping out. Even the manager for the uh, East Nepean team, Jim Amadio, was out on the field with the bucket just trying to help out and get this game ready. The, the ramifications from this, if if they can't play today, they got to play earlier tomorrow, and that's just going to really hurt pitch count, which is something we'll probably talk about quite a bit during this game today. Well, East Nepean 1-0 and after that exciting game yesterday. They had a walk-off single two-run single in the bottom of the six in that first game. Perth lost 13-3 to against Ancaster. Ancaster coming from just outside of Hamilton. They are the really the team that's traveled the furthest. This was almost a five-team tournament. Windsor pulled out, and in the district final here, Ottawa West and East Nepean squared off, and East Nepean hadn't lost to Ottawa West at any point all year, and it was a tight one in that game. Auto West ended up winning that one 10-9, to and they secured that sixth spot. Yeah, so their record this year against Ottawa West is two wins, one, uh, one loss, and one tie. And in every game uh, that wasn't a tie, it's been a win or loss by one run. So it's been close, close games all year. I mean, expect that again. These are two really good teams, the East Nepean team and the... Uh, Ottawa Ottawa West team in this, the Twins team in this tournament. So, I mean, games against them, games in this tournament with those two teams are going to be uh, really exciting to watch. Well, and the Twins are taking advantage of their opportunity to be here in this Ontario Championship. 2-0 and to lead the way in the standings so far, but look at their runs for and runs against. 24 runs for, four runs against. So they're, they've jumped out to be the top team so far here in this tournament and it's going to be interesting to see the way the week plays out we will have games for you most of the week we're back here on tuesday for a 130 game then thursday at 4 30 we'll have the semifinals, and friday at 4 30 we'll have the final for you there are also games broadcast on the french side so you can tune into that but there is great baseball action here at the eagles nest all week long and for those of you watching from out of town, as you have a look now at the managers for both of these teams, Craig White and Jim Amadio standing just in front of home plate as they do their final preparations before we get this game going. But if you're in Ottawa, come out here to Barhaven, come out to the Eagles Nest and watch these 11 and 12 year olds Fight for a spot in the Canadian Championships. The winner of this uh, six-team tournament will head to Calgary for the Canadians, and they will all vie for an opportunity to represent Canada at the Little League World Series. I've got to say, too, Colin, it is exciting. Hey, there, we got a little wave <laughs> from Mr. Amadu himself at catcher. It is so exciting, uh, Colin, to be back in baseball, have baseball back in Ottawa, back on the field again. We have not done baseball since, you know, three years ago now with uh, with all the COVID restrictions and everything. So it's really just nice to have baseball back. And the last games we did, Little League, we did in Barhaven. The amount of fans that were at those games was just amazing. 
Let's have a look now at the starting lineup. This is the batting lineup for the Perth Royals, leading things off. Finn Halpenny, followed by Easton Chofi and Cameron White. Cameron White's got a brother also on this team. He bats sixth right after Grady Beamish. You see Jackson White there, followed by Tanner Ellick, Truex McNevin, Jason Tizik, and Jacob Bennett in the ninth slot. Defensively for the East Nepean Eagles, we will take a look at that in a moment. And here it comes up now, Austin Van Ryswick in left field. And center field is James Kelly. Right fielder is Carter McLean. On the infield at third base, you have Chase Walsh Guthrie at shortstop. Emmett O'Neill, Cooper Leppard at second base. Cole Cote at first. Behind the plate is Owen Amadio. And on the mound this evening, Dante Saka throwing his final warm-up pitches. And Colin Owen just excited you pronounce his name properly. <laughs> Apparently when there, that's <laughs> something he said before the game. Uh, everyone always gets his name wrong. I don't know how they pronounce it. Amadeo maybe, but yeah. Happy to have his name pronounced properly finally. Well, here we go for the second game for both of these teams. Hal Penny in the batter's box. It looks a called first strike. Nice pitch from Saka. There it is, the first pitch on Rogers TV we've had in a long time. 0-1 oh the count. There's a breaking ball, nice pitch. 0-2, oh and, and right away Saka out in front of this first batter. Here's the 0-2 setting up high is Amadio. And this one is smashed into right field. Little bobble out there by McLean. And a two strike single for Finn Halpenny to get things started for the Perth Royals. Nice job by Halpenny on that high pitch to deposit that one into right field. Get on base for Ethan Sophie. And this one grounded to third. They'll turn. Try to turn two, they get the force out at second base. Easton Chofi into first base. So the fielder's choice, 5-4. Easton Chofi at first base now, Halpenny retired at second base. Cameron White the batter. Cameron didn't play in the last game for this team. He actually had to sit out a couple, well he did sit out a couple of excavation games as well. Looks at a called first strike. Now they've got Chofi, but he outsmarts the East Nepean defense and makes it down to second base. Good job by Halpenny getting out of that one, getting to second base. This is swinging to miss, but the ball gets by Amadio. So the backstop runner stays at second, so no damage done. Cameron White mentioning before. He turns 12 next week, July 31st. He missed the game. Uh, he had a suspension in his division play down. Oh, the 0-2, he gets a piece of that. Count stays in Saka's favor. And he thought that suspension, they played a couple of exhibition games, and they thought the suspension would have counted there. They found it, it didn't. So he had to sit out their last game. So this is his first game back, and he's excited to be here. And this one. Back to Saka, he gets the easy out at first base. Chofi rounds third base, but smartly stays right there. Nice. So with two outs in the top of the first inning, runner on third base. That was a nice job by the pitcher there, Saka. Grab that ball, watch the runner, see if he can get that out, but wisely getting that out, that sure out at first base. Here's Grady Beavish at the plate, batting in the cleanup spot, and he Hits one to third base, good throw over. It's bobbled by the first baseman. And Perth on the board early. Nice job by McLean out there. I'll tell you, when I'm coaching little kids, that's something you try to pound in big time. Watch this throw as it comes in low. He just can't scoop it out of the dirt. Look at the right fielder there, McLean, hopping over there very quickly and picking up that ball. So that the runner is not able to take extra bases, but one run does score. This is a wild pitch, runner heading down to second base. It's 
So air on the third baseman, Guthrie. And this one fouled back. This is Jackson White at the plate. Jackson White, the younger brother of Cameron. They have a couple of 10-year-olds, two 10-year-olds on this team. So there's a really good mix of age on this team. There are six players that are 12 years old, but they have a good future with some of the young players on this team mixed in. One and one, the count. This one, just a little blooper. And it lands in safely, just in front of the second baseman, Leopard. Really nice try by Leopard there as he dives. Take another look at this as it's popped up. Trying to give it his all, just out of his reach. Drops in there, runners on first and third now. Uh, six batter at the plate now is Tanner Ellick. Right-handed batter. Here's the pitch from Saka. Good pitch right down the middle of the plate for strike one. Should mention that Saka pitched yesterday. He threw 10 pitches in that game yesterday, so he is eligible to pitch today and probably going to throw 50 pitches in this game today. Runner heading down to second. Amadio missed that pitch coming across the plate. That was a bit outside. Ellick tried to get a piece of it. Here's other, the 0-2. Other pitchers that threw in that game, Cole Coco. Oh, great play by the third baseman to make the final out there in the top of the first inning. So a couple of hits in that top of the first and a run across. Guthrie, who made the earlier error, makes a great play to end the top of the first. Two runners left on base in that inning. Was mentioning Cole Cote throwing 49 pitches in that game before. So with 49 pitches, he would have to rest two days. Aiden Hallett. Also pitching 34 pitches he threw, so he would be resting one day. And then Dante Saka, the 10 pitches, so he's able to pitch today. Here's the batting lineup for the East Nepean Eagles. They are the home team here this afternoon. Cooper Leopard will lead things off, followed by Emmett O'Neill and Cole Cote. Dante Saka batting in the cleanup position. Austin Van Ryswick, the left fielder, batting fifth, followed by Chase Walsh Guthrie. Carter McLean, Owen Amadio, and James Kelly round out the batting order for the East Nepean Eagles. Defensively for the Perth Royals, there you see the outfielders, Truex McNevin, Phil, Finn Halpenny, and Tanner Ellick going left to right. On the infield, Jackson White and Cameron White, you see patrolling both sides of the infield. Up the middle, you've got Easton Chofi and Jacob Bennett. Behind the plate this afternoon for Perth is Grady Beamish, and on the pitching mound is Jacob Tizik. They'll face a pretty potent East Nepean Eagles lineup. Although they were held to only two runs yesterday, but had a great offensive season. Yeah, and like we said, that, that matchup between those two teams, that's, uh, that's going to be fun to watch, and that's a really just dominant battle, so to hold them... Uh, to, to two runs is pretty amazing. I got to give uh, big props, a shout out here to, to Ryan Kelly. He's going to be my man between innings, I think, to find out these pitch counts. I'm guessing there must be some relation with Ryan Kelly and James Kelly. No, no relation. Oh, wow. Okay, look at that. All right. Well, just a, just a good fan here anyways. Pitch count's important. So there was 15 pitches thrown by Saka in that first inning. And remember, that pitch count is going to be very important to monitor in this tournament. We talked about before the game started. If this game didn't happen today, the ramifications from them having to throw pitchers uh, in two games tomorrow, just trying to manage pitch counts would have been a nightmare. Cooper Leopard steps into the batter's box. And here's the first pitch from Tizik in for strike one. Oh, won the count, and this one in for strike number two. So quickly, Cooper Leopard behind in the count. This one hit right back up the middle, goes off Tizik, and Leopard runs it out. He's heading to second base as that ball gets by the first baseman, Cameron White, and Leopard 
in there safely, no throw. Well, we mentioned this the half inning before, Colin. The reason why he got second base is because they were not playing heads up baseball here. This one hits the pitchers like, nice job picking that up and trying to make the throw. But it gets past the first baseman, and the right fielder is not backing up first base, and that allows a runner in scoring position for Nepean. There's Emmett O'Neill, and this one to the shortstop. Wasn't hit hard enough. And Chofi not able to do much of anything with it. So right away, the first two batters on base for the East Nepean Eagles with Cole Cote up to the plate. Nice job by Cooper Leppard there. I really like that. Getting off the base, the ball's in front of him. He can see what's going on. And just trying to dance around that shortstop a little bit, trying to get his attention and not able to make that throw to first base to get the out. Now, the one thing you'll notice here, and this is a, le a, a rule in this age category, the runners are not allowed to take a lead until that ball crosses the plate. As Cote swings through one right there, evening up the count at one and one. That's a great point, Colin. And there is a bit of a, a, a gap in the backstop. There is some room, so if the ball gets away from the catcher, they could run. Oh, a little golf one right there. He golfs it into left field, and it gets by the left fielder, McNevin. In to score is Cooper Leppard in this game all knotted up at one. A good single there by Cole Cote to get on base. I'm gonna call that an advance on error for him getting into second base as that one gets past the left fielder under his bare hand, trying to field that with his bare hand to pick it up. Here's the pitcher, Dante Saka. So Oof. pitcher versus pitcher right here. Tizek gets the early strike. Runners on second and third for East Nepean. Big spot here for the pitcher. He can help himself out, Dante Saka. Grounder, this goes off the glove of Tizek. Recovers and makes a nice play to get the out at first bait. But a run does score Love as Emmett O'Neill comes into play. What a nice play. Just staying on the ball, staying on top of it, getting his glove on it as it's hit right back to him. Just out of his reach, able to pick it up barehanded and make that throw again. Right fielder not backing up the base there. If that ball got away, that would have been big trouble. So Austin Van Ryswick now at the plate, the first right-handed batter that Tizek has faced here in this East Nepean lineup. Two and oh the count. There's only one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Eagles lead two to one. That pitch is outside. Three and oh the count to Van, Van Ryswick. Van Ryswick, one of the big pitchers or players you want to watch this week. He had a grand slam in the district finals. So a big bat for this team, and they need him here now with two runners in scoring position. Or one runner in scoring position, rather. 3-1 the count, here's the pitch. Yeah, this yeah, swing yeah. and a miss. As Tizek goes right after Ryan Ryswick. Count full, one out here, still in the bottom of the first inning. And this pitch outside, good eye by Van Ryswick. He goes down to first base. First walk we've seen today, nice patience. Runners on first and third here now. With Chase Guthrie up, number 12, playing third base. He was busy that last half inning. Van Ryswick heads down to second base. Now no throw. There's a big play, that runner on first and third. You saw the catcher, he had no, <laughs> no intention of throwing that ball to second base. You don't want to throw all that way and then have the runner at third base run home. Grounder to third base, long throw over, and he makes the play. Here's the play at the plate. Ball gets by the catcher. And into score was Cole Cote. Nice job there by Perth on that ball to get that out at first base. As this one is hit to the third baseman, nice throw 
over to first to get the out, and that throw home just getting away from the catcher, and I really love the pitcher there, Tizik, getting quickly to home plate to get try to get that uh, out and cover the plate. Here's Carter McLean swinging at the first pitch, fouls this one back over the dugout. Another left-handed batter in the batter's box as Tizik calls time to tie his shoe. There's the <laughs> runner over on third base. Two outs in the inning, Carter McLean batting with the one runner on again at third base. One and one the count. McLean trying to get that fourth run in across the plate. <laughs> Looks at that one called strike. And now behind in the count. Teammates cheering him on. Here's the one, two. A swing and a miss for strike three. And the first strikeout of the afternoon for either team. So three runs scored in that inning. Up three to one in this game. And building on this score, I mean, this is going to have ramifications uh, later on in this game in, in the, the pitchers. What pitches you're going to bring into this game? Um, how many pitches you're going to allow to throw, them be, uh, throw in this game? Because later on, in this tournament, you'll want to be able to have some of your bigger pitchers be able to pitch in those games. So if you can hold back some of those arms right now, if you have that early lead, that's going to be key for them. So to the top of the second inning we go. East Nepean with a two-run advantage. Saka firing his final warm-up pitchers pitches. As his regular catcher, Amadio, took a little bit longer to get all suited up. Yeah, that's frustrating sometimes when you have that catcher. He's got the pads on, he's on deck, he's ready to bat, and you want to leave those those pads on just in case, but when you're ready to go or if you're or if you're on base and running anyways, you gotta hustle in quick, get every, all the gear back on and get ready to go. And they are all set. As that final one gets by the catcher, throws down to second base. It's McNevin at the plate. Grounds one to the first baseman. Second baseman over to cover. And just like that. Out number one. Nice work again by East Apian. First baseman picking up that ball. The second baseman, Leopard, ready there to cover first base. You see him there getting that ball really quick, getting the out at first base. First there to the end. Here's the pitcher, Jacob Tizik, at the dish. First pitch that he sees, he swings on it. Nice defensive play by Saka. And gets the out. Defense is story in this game early on with some errors, but some good plays as well. Diving to his left, on his knees, the throw to first base, and again, that right fielder backing up that play just in case, I love that. Jacob Bennett, the ninth batter in the lineup, for the Perth Royals, sees this one come inside for ball one. Here's the second pitch from Saka. This one inside once again. Two outs in the inning, the number nine hitter. The Perth Royals really 
rely on the top of their lineup. They have some big hitters up there. So you got to take advantage here right now. Good cut there by Bennett. Thought Gets it a piece of it. One. Almost. I don't know. Missed it by that much. We're getting older. Our reflexes aren't that good anymore. <laughs> This one outside, so 3-0 and oh now. And you've got to figure that Sacco, excuse me, 3-1. and one. You figure Sacco's got to force him to swing here. And this one in for strike number two. So a full count with two outs here in the top of the second inning. You can't let this batter go. This is the number nine hitter. You need to attack and get him out. You do not want to face the top of the order here. And just like the last half inning ended, this one ends on a strikeout swinging as well. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base for that one. I'm curious how many pitches he threw in that inning. 15, he's at total so far. Mike? Leading off the next inning will be Owen Amadio. James Kelly, and then back to the top of the order, Cooper Leopard. <coughs> so told the pitch count there was nine. So we're at 24 pitches so far for Dante Saka. That is amazing. Generally, I mean, Major league numbers you're looking at, but even at this level, it, it's still good a good number to kind of uh, keep an eye on. But that 15 pitches per inning is ideal to keep under that amount. So with 24 pitches thrown right now, he's only on one day rest. They could have him throw 10 more pitches. I mean, no, they had him. The idea was 50 pitches anyways. They're going to give him the two days rest. So. 50 pitches and then see where they're at after that and who they want to bring in. I mean, maybe he 50 is going to be his max and they'll pull him out whether he's pitching halfway through the batter or not. Well, Tizik will face Owen Amadio, James Kelly, and then back to the top of the lineup, Cooper Leopard. In the bottom of the second inning, all scheduled to bat anyway. And if you're the Perth Royals here, you really just have to shore up your defense, stop any of this bleeding, and stay in this game, because you're only down by two runs. Great job by the first baseman, White. Solid effort there with the quick glove. And one pitch, and we have one out. Nice contact here. Lines it to the first baseman opposite field. A one bouncer picks it up, steps on first for the out. Now the ninth batter, James Kelly here. He also swings at the first pitch. A grounder to the short and a long throw. And again, a nice play, a good stretch by the first baseman, Cameron White, for out number two. Exactly what the doctor ordered for the Perth Royals. Two outs, the eight and nine hitter at the top of the order now here, though. And Cooper Leopard getting on base with the E1 last time up. Ooh. And looks at a called first strike. Tizik seemed to be settling in here in the second inning. Grounder to the second baseman. Bennett scoops it up, throws it across, and he's safe. Oh, so close. As Leopard beats out the throw. Cameron White shaking his head. He wants a replay on this one. Looked like a good call. Just held that ball for an extra second to get his handle on it, so the throw a little late. So an infield single puts Cooper Leopard at first base. With Emmett O'Neill at the plate, singled in the first inning, and here he hits one to the second baseman, he flips it over. Bennett to Chofi, just like that. And the Perth Royals out of this inning. When you're playing defense and, and you're a pretty confident player and something like that happens again, just a little slow on that, that transition from the glove to the hand to get that ball to first base, 
And then the ball, next ball is hit right back to him, and he's able to make that play. Nice job. No harm done there against the Perth Royals. So still 3-1 in this game. Hey, it took East Nepean a long time yesterday to get the, the bats going, and they finally did in the bottom of the sixth inning. Down only one nothing going into the bottom of the sixth. Managed to get a couple runs across to win that game. And already here this afternoon with three runs on the board. Yeah, in that game, they were, it was 2-1 yeah, on that walk-off. There was two outs, two strikes, bottom of the sixth, the bases loaded, and that walk-off single for their team. That was a huge walk-off win for them. Great way to start the tournament for the host team. And I think that was Chase Guthrie that got that hit in that game too. So top of the order for the Royals coming to the plate. Halpenny, Chaffee, and Cameron White, the first baseman you saw make a couple of great defensive plays there in the bottom of the second inning. Colin, I had six pitches in that inning, so Tizik is now at 27 pitches total. Yeah, he had a, a tougher first inning, but his defense didn't help him much, and he really, really settled down there in the bottom of the second. Yeah, he's given up three runs, but he's in kind of the same boat right now as his counterpart, Dante Saka, 27 pitches versus 24 pitches. Both teams in good shape. This one fouled back right over top of us. Souvenir for the fans. And the count even at one. Al Penny looking in now. One and one the count. Here comes the pitch from Saka. This one a bit high and outside for ball number two. I asked before the game what pitches Saka throws. Fastball was the answer from the coaches, but if you ask Saka, he throws a two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball, curveball, cutter, slider. It's a lot of pitches yeah. for him. <laughs> two and two now the count as that last pitch was fouled off to the screen. Here's the pitch from Saka. And this one popped to the first baseman. And a nice effort there by Cote to make out number one. Pop up to the first baseman there. At this age level, you'll mainly just see a fastball change up mix. You may see the odd curveball here and there. It's generally not going to be for strikes, depending on uh, you know, how old the pitcher is at this age. But here's Easton Chofi. Reached on a fielder's choice in the top of the first and scored the only run for the Royals. Fouls that first pitch over the East Nepean dugout. And more important than throwing all those pitches like the slider, curveball, whatever else you're going to mix in off speed. Is, is just getting that fastball over the plate and throwing the changeup as well. You don't want to do too many things, throwing a fork ball at, uh, at this age and doing some, you know, potentially some damage to your arm. Catcher set up high. That pitch came down low, and then an error by Amadio. So Chofi reaches base. Nice work by Perth here. You can see him on this pitch, as you said, setting up high, swinging and missing, and then walking off in upset, and everyone yelling at him to run to first base. He pays attention, runs to first base, and gets there safely. Nice job. Here's Cameron White. <coughs> Runner going down to second. Bit of miscommunication there between O'Neill and Leopard as to who was going to cover that bag. Chofi in there safely. Big spot here for Cameron White with the runner in scoring position. Already mentioned, Perth really relies on this player. A great player for this team, Cameron White. And he's got a chance to pull within one or potentially tie this game. 
One and one the count to White. Runner on second base. Here's the pitch from Saka. And this one looped over the head of the short, uh, the shortstop. Throw into third base, gets away from the third baseman. And in to score is Easton Chofi down to second. Goes Cameron White on the error. To the right fielder, Van Ry the left fielder, excuse me, Van Ryswick. And Cameron White does it, goes opposite field, hits that to the left fielder. Nice job picking it up, the throws to third base. But that ball gets away from the third baseman and the runner comes in to score. Cameron White advancing to second on that play. This one hit over the head of the third baseman. White into third safely. And that was Grady Beamish, the cleanup hitter, with a nice single. Runners on first and third here now. We will probably see Grady Beamish take second base. And there he goes, no throw. They allow him to get down to second uncontested. And now two runners in scoring position for Jackson White, the younger brother of Cameron. Makes a wild swing at that pitch. That went up a little high. Yeah, I know he shouldn't have swung at that one, up, up and outside. One and one the count. Here's the pitch from Saka. Another swing and a miss by White and Saka ahead one and two. Here's the one two inside. White gets out of the way. Great job by Amadio behind the plate to keep that one in play. Yeah, thinking the exact same thing. You got to keep those runners at second and third here. Saka not wasting any time, pop fly. Tagging at third is White and a good throw by Van Ryswick to keep White at third base. Just not deep enough for White to be able to score on that ball that was hit to the left fielder and a great job by Amadio to stop that ball. Another one that bounced around on this East Nepean team but he stopped the ball, kept it in front of him and kept the runners at second and third. Now there's two out. This pitch comes in high to Tanner Ellick. He lets that one go by. 1-0 oh the count. Saka trying to get out of this inning. Leaving those runners on base. There's a grounder to the third baseman. Guthrie to Cote, and that will do it for the Perth Royals. Some good defense there in the back half of that inning for East Nepean. I Great can't, work over I can't there hear you, third Mike. Base in this game so far for East Nepean. and some really big plays in throws to first base. Mike, the outs. I can barely hear that's you. That's the second time that Tanner Alec has grounded out to that third baseman. Five three. There you see the score as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Eagles up. Three to two. There's one We've got run. a trivia question for you. Go ahead. No. True <laughs> or false? Canada has never reached the Little League World Series final in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And how are they going to answer? They're going to phone in. They're going to the text. I'm text gonna Colin. Give a, let's Just give text your Colin. number to, to, to Brett here. Yeah. Text Colin. You can uh, reach him at Remax, right? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. Text Colin, let him know what the answer is. Let him buy a house. Same thing here, you saw the catcher behind the plate, not ready, but into catches uh, his pitcher now. So for oh, East Nepean, we're looking at Cole Cote, Dante Saka, and Austin Van Ryswick do up at the plate. Perth Royals have left four runners on base in this game so far. Down three to two in this one.
and over to cover the second baseman, but great effort, but not able to make the play. Close play at first base, probably call that an infield single. So important to get the first runner on base. And Cole Cote did that. Is now the pitcher at the plate, Dante Saka. Ryswick with the pitch, grounder to second. They're gonna have to take the easy out at first and they make it. Down to second base goes Cole Cote. Ground out 4-3, but does move the runner into scoring position now. There's the replay, and you can see there the runner heading down to second base. They didn't really have a play on him. It didn't even seem to me like he looked at the uh, at that runner. Maybe saw him out of the corner of his eye, but just intentions to get that runner out at first, and he did. The left fielder, Austin Ooh. Van Ryswick, at the plate now. Called strike. I didn't get the pitch count from that last inning. 18, 19. All right, there we go, 19. We had on that last one, wow. That pitch up high, so two and one to count. Here's the pitch from Tizik. this one in the dirt. Good job by the catcher, Beamish. Keeping that in front of him, keeping the runner at second base. 43 pitches now, the total for Dante Saka. This pitch also in the dirt and low, so Van Ryswick will Head down to first base, and in each of his at-bats, he's been walked. Yeah, interesting for Van Weiswick. Good for him. Good eyes at the plate, walking both both times and getting on base. Let those guys behind you cash in some runs. And looks like we're getting a replacement here. Yeah, we're going to have a substitution. Looks like Owen Ahern will come to the plate. Not sure why Jim Amadio uh, can't hear me. Isn't coming to, to tell me first, but I'll have to ask him afterwards. So 14 for four, is that what we heard? Or 14 for 12, it's a pinch hitter. Yeah, Gu Walsh Guthrie comes out and Owen Ahern into the plate coming off the bench and his first at bat here this afternoon. This ball gets away from the catcher down to third base. And in there safely was Cole Cote and Austin Van Ryswick down to second base on that play. Nice job by Jackson White getting his glove on that ball and stopping it, not getting it past him. Ahern with the big cut right there, swings through that. And it's a ball and two strikes as Ryswick working quickly. This one missing high. Big spot here now with one out in the inning for Austin Ahern to have a chance to catch these runs in. And he hits one up the middle, goes underneath the glove of the shortstop. One run in to score. Van Ryswick stopping at third, and East Nepean with runners on the corners and a 4-2 lead. This ball getting past the shortstop under his glove, I thought he had a chance at it. Watch the second base, just out of the, the the view, you can't see him, but he really wasn't watching the second baseman standing on second base when the ball was coming in, and he had, had no idea it was coming at him. Finally caught a glimpse of it just as it was coming at him and was able to stop that ball. We'll have another switch here as Aiden Hallett Ooh. comes to the plate, and down to second base uncontested again goes Owen Ahern. And a nice play by the third baseman, Jackson White, on the ball right there. And we're gonna have another substitution as Jimmy Ambler will come to the plate as you look at that last play. So we had Owen Ahern, 
And then Aiden Hallett. This one fouled and just off the roof of the Perth dugout. Ambler in for Amadio. One and oh the count, that one low and outside. It's one and one. So maybe East Nepean recognizing that they've got to give themselves more of a cushion than this two lead advantage they have right now. Runners on second and third trying to cash them in. Yeah, in this tournament style play, I mean, these are must win games. And if they need to burn some good pitchers, they'll do that. This one driven deep into wow. right field and it will get by the right fielder, Alec. Two runs into score and a double for Jimmy Ambler gives the East Nepean Eagles a 6-2 to two advantage. Starting to pull away a little bit there. Three runs in this inning. A big two RBI double to right field by Aiden Hallett. Or Jimmy Ambler, rather. So another substitution as Taewon Yoon gets his first at bat in place of James Kelly. He is down early in the count, 0-1. Uh, one of the fun things about doing these games, your score sheet is a mess afterwards. <laughs> well, and Yoon. Is the final out here in the bottom of the third inning. But the damage is done as three runs cross the plate. The Eagles have a six to two advantage. Eight hits to three hits in favor of East Nepean. So six hits in that inning, three runs for East Nepean. I had, I guess, no errors, I think, in that inning. And then, try to find out this pitch count. 22, wow, 22 pitches, oh my gosh, in that inning. So that'll put them at 49. Jacob Tizik at 49 pitches total, so here's the question then. Call in for you, Jacob Tisic at 49 pitches. He could uh, throw one more. You're probably not going to make him throw one pitch, but he'd be on two days rest right now if if you got brought out of the game and you brought in a new pitcher, which is exactly what East Nepean is planning on doing. So to the top of the fourth we go. Truix McNevin. I asked Truix before the game. I had never heard that name before. What he was, uh, who he was named after, or where that name came from. A race car driver, he Mar told me. Martin Truix Jr. There you go. So <laughs> parents must be big race car fans. It was nice talking. It was nice talking to all of them, but yeah, nice talking to Truix before the the game and these these kids were really excited to get out on this this field and get this game in mentioned before if they weren't able to get this game in they'd have to play at nine o'clock tomorrow morning and then both teams would be playing two games tomorrow and trying to figure out pitch counts for that uh, would be a mess so good that we were able to get this game in the conditions right now on the field are, are pretty good the grounds crew did an amazing job getting this field ready I can't speak for what it's like fielding at shortstop right now, I guess, if there's uh, what the ball's bouncing like with with uh, everything they had to put on the field to get it ready, but looks good. Nevin smashes one to the second baseman. Great job keeping the ball in front of him. And makes out number one. That ball hitting about the same spot his last time up. It was a ground out 3-4. This time it's a ground out 4-3. Nice job just stopping that ball getting in front of it, Leopard, and then making that throw to first base for the out. Here's the pitcher, Jacob Tizik. 
at the plate. Time called, and there's going to be a meeting on the mound here. That's number 11, Jimmy Ambler, who came in to uh, pinch hit for Owen Amadio in the last half of the inning. Now, who came in to pinch hit? I guess it was number six then that came in to pinch hit to end the inning. That was Taewon Yoon. Oh, and two now the count to Tizik. And a weak swing right there, and he is a victim of a second strikeout. For Dante Saka. Again, a nice spot here for Dante Saka with the seven, eight, nine hitters to try to take advantage. Strikeout swinging Jacob Bennett his last time up to bat. Actually, we have a switch. It's Tristan Kendall in there at the plate now. Okay. Number 23. Sack it down. 3-0 and now the count. Ooh. So an illegal pitch right there, and Kendall will head down to first base. And that'll be the end of the day. That's too bad. Jim Amadio trying to get through this inning. I'm not sure. I, I imagine that was maybe pitch number 49 or so, but he was trying to get through this inning with the 7, 8, 9 hitters throwing under 50 pitches and not able to do it. So it looks like number 5, Emmett O'Neill, will take the mound now for the East Nepean Eagles. Dante Saka will go to shortstop. Emmett O'Neill hasn't pitched in this tournament so far, and depending on the score, where it's at, how big of a lead they have, or how tight this, this game is going to be will depend how deep he's able to pitch in this game. So we are in the top of the fourth inning, East Nepean with a six to two lead. Looking for win number two of this tournament. Perth trying to get in the win column after a 13-3 loss yesterday to Ancaster. Mostly local teams in this six-team tournament. Yeah, Ancaster Diamondbacks, the East Nepean Eagles, Ottawa West Twins, the Orleans Red Sox, Cornwall River Rats, and Perth Royals. And I was told that the uh, East Nepean Eagles have played, I guess, every uh, every team they've played against in this one except for a couple. Grounder to second and a quick throw over to first. And that ends the fourth inning as Finn Halpenny goes down 4-3. The only teams that they haven't played so far this year are Ancaster and Perth. For this, the first game against Perth as he picks up that ball after bobbling it a bit. Again, the second time that's happened where the ball's been hit hard to uh, that second base spot, but able to stop it and pick it up and make the out. That's key, and that's the second ground out 4 3 that we saw in that inning. So we'll go back to our <laughs> trivia question of the day true or false, Brett? Canada has never reached the Little League World Series final in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Your answer is? Uh, I was, what was it? The Junior Red Sox had the best showing ever. But this was, yeah, 13, 14 year olds. Uh, 2005 in the Junior League World Series. I guess I'm going to say no. False. And what is the answer? The answer false. is false. Yeah. In 1965, Stony Creek, Ontario lost to the Windsor Locks from Connecticut in the Little League World Series final 3-1. to one. So there you go. <laughs> uh, on the mound here throwing Easton Chofi in this one. So we had 43 pitches thrown total by... Jacob Tizik. And Tizik will go over to shortstop. Now 
Now the tough thing for us is when they make all these switches is figuring out where everybody is defensively. Yeah, I I usually just let that go. <laughs> well, you're not the play-by-play -play guy. By about the third inning, I, uh, yeah. I remember uh, producer Al Wallet one year and I made a comment about uh, having, j jokingly, having somebody just to keep track of all the uh, the movement on the field because uh, if you're listening at home, this is just Colin and I trying to pay attention as best as possible. And at the plate, it's easier because you'll see the numbers up there and it doesn't line up. But when they're in the field, you know, the guy, there's a switch in right field. You don't see that often. This one, Cooper Leopard pops it right up to the new pitcher. Easton Chofi, and he makes the easy out for out number one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Great way to start this game for Chofi. Emmett O'Neill into bat now. Strike called. Didn't seem like O'Neill agreed with that one, but here's the 0-1. This pitch way up high, lays off that. And the count now even at one. 6-2 lead for the East Nepean Eagles here at the Eagles Nest. Bottom of the fourth inning. And that pitch down in the dirt for ball number two. Easton Chofi facing the top of the order here. Emmett O'Neill reached base in the first inning in E6. His second at bat was a ground out to the second baseman. And now he's ahead in the count three and one. Let's see what he does here. Here comes the pitch from Chofi. A long fly ball and a great job by the center fielder. For out number two. Nice contact here. Watch this one hit high and deep to right center field and a nice catch out there. Well, here's number 10, Cole Cote, trying to get something going for East Nepean. This pitch way high. Two down in the inning. Cole Cote has reached base twice and scored twice. He is a big contributor for this East Nepean team, and they're going to rely on him here. <laughs> Strike one called. Cote looks at that one go by. Cote, probably one of the top players and pitchers on this club. They were really going to rely on him throughout this tournament pitching-wise. Big swing right there from Cote. And Chofi ahead now, one and two, with two out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cote shakes his head, believes he can do better than that. Stays off that one. Chofi just kind of throwing one away right there. Evens the count at two, twos across the board in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Good swing right there by Cote right at the center fielder. And two good plays by the center fielder to end the fourth inning. Yeah, good contact there. That was twice, two balls that were hit high and deep to center field. Well hit balls, but just well placed for this Perth Royals club, able to get underneath both those balls and make the play. So a three up, three down inning. Nice job there by Easton Chofi to keep this East Nepean team in check. Score is six to two right now. Well, so. Perth has to get something going here in the top of the fifth inning, running out of outs and down four runs. So I had 13 pitches there in that inning for Chofi, that's really good for him. Emmett O'Neill ready to throw his warm up pitches. Jimmy Ambler just gets behind the plate. As the Perth coaches and manager have a little powwow with their team to try and get those bats going, see if they can get some runs across the board here and close this gap. I didn't get the pitch count total for Dante Saka in that fourth inning. I'm imagining it was just under the 50, though. And like I said, that would keep him at his two days rest. Job, 
I remember actually the last time we set up here, we had the computers out and they had Wi-Fi for us up in that big building in right field and we were able to track they had everything kind of uh, going online for us which was really nice and I don't know maybe they do again maybe I'll bring the computer next time or just pay attention or just pay attention <laughs> I, I'll count pitches from now on okay so do you remember It'll last the time old numbering system yeah. one, two, three, four. do you remember last time we did this and we had our our uh, roving reporter that would sit at the table with us who was that I don't remember. And we'd send him on Dude, missions. I'm getting old. Eh? Okay. I can't remember last right. week. Can't remember. <laughs> that was seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, probably. 2015. Yeah, probably, yeah, no. Uh, seven years ago when uh, before COVID happened. And we'd send him on these missions. And, and man, he was awesome at uh, finding everything out for us. Because there's a lot happening in this tournament. There's a good cut there by Easton Chofi, but a lazy fly ball right to the pitcher. And Emma O'Neill makes out number one here in the top of the fifth inning. Tough one for Easton Chofi. That's the first time he hasn't reached base and scored in this game. And that's not going to make the right-hander happy. A pop-up to the first base, or to the pitcher, rather. Here is Cameron White, the first baseman. Looks at a called first strike. Cameron White ground out to the pitcher in the first inning. And then his last at bat, a single to left field, advanced to second base on an error. Also cashed a run in on that play. Good swing right here. This could be trouble up in the sun, but the left fielder over to make a nice play for out number two. Ben Ryswick, nice job getting under that ball. Some nice catches in the outfield and at third base, we've seen so far hammers that one. Nice job. Takes a little look, but good job by Cameron White to get the hustle on afterwards. Chopper back to the pitcher. Easy out for the third out of the top of the fifth inning. And just like that, one, two, three, East Nepean will come back to the plate. Here's the replay. Ground out, one, three. Another three up, three down inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. There have been a few three up, three down innings in this game, but I mean, if that's not happening, then there's been some runs scored. 6-2 the score in this game right now. And we're gonna be moving into the bottom of the fifth inning. There will be six innings played in this game. So the Perth Royals only have one more chance. They have to stop East Nepean here, contain them, make sure they score no more runs, and then they've got a four run gap that they've got to climb out of. Yeah, this is a big inning for Easton Chofi to try and hold this Eagles team to no runs. If they have any hope of coming back in this game, a four-run deficit seems pretty daunting right now. If they allow that gap to get any wider, it could be a tough final inning. And he's going to be facing, I mean, the top of the order's gone. That's the good news for him. He, he did a great job retiring Cooper Leopard, Emmett O'Neill, and Cole Cote. And Cole Cote, who's, who's played so well in this game so far, even the out that he had was a, a deep fly ball to center field. But now facing Dante Saka, Austin Van Ryswick, who has gotten on base twice today with walks. You have to ensure you don't walk this guy a third time. And then it'll probably be Owen Ahern that's batting after that, an Owen Ahern and his lone at bat in this game had a single to center field and catch in a run. A couple more warm up pitches for Chofi. You see him there on your screen, number 11. Not throwing too hard in his warm up pitches, saving it for. Yeah, batters? Was, yeah, thinking the same thing. He's uh, He was lobbing a few of them in there. Arm must feel warm already anyway. And here's Dante Saka. Started this game on the pitching mound for East Nepean. There's the pitch from Chofi, ball one. Dante Saka, a great effort by him. Again, don't have the final pitch cut number, but I imagine it was under that 50. A great start for his club after throwing 10 pitches yesterday. And putting them in a great position to win this game. Saka ahead in the count, 2-0 right now. 
There's a strike, good pitch there from Easton Chofi. Two and one the count as Saka tries to get on base. That ball fouled right over top of our heads. The count even at two. Here's the pitch from Chofi. This one down in the dirt. Good job by Saka not taking a swing at that one. Full count here. Big pitch. Here it is. Saka lets it go, and the ball is dropped. Saka doesn't realize it started back to the woods, the dugout. And the catcher, Grady Beamish, tags him for the out. Second time we've seen that in this game today now. Once for both teams, not realizing they should run right away to first base and was tagged for the out. Now the left fielder, Austin Van Ryswick, comes to the plate. Couple of walks. This one takes a bad hop. Wow. Past the third baseman. Gets by Jackson White and Van Ryswick on to first. Was going to say we don't know how Van Ryswick's going to do at the bat here because we haven't seen him hit a ball in fair play so far. Finally does. Hits it to the third baseman. Also mentioned earlier that the grounds crew did a wonderful job getting this game ready but weren't sure what it would be like for the shortstop to feel the ball and you saw just there on the third baseman as that ball hops right over his glove. First pitch to Owen Ahern in for strike number one. One out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That one missing for ball number one. I doubt they'll call that one an error for Van Wysoek, a nice hit. They shouldn't, that was a tough hop. So that one goes off the end of the bat of a Hearn. One and two, the count. Here's the pitch from Chofi. This one gets by the catcher and down to second. We'll go Van Ryswick. In the scoring position now with one out. Great job, Van Ryswick. Watching that ball closely as soon as across the plate, taking his lead. And then when he saw it bounced, he hustled. Took a look in just to peek where it was at. And there is strike number three. Good pitch there for Easton Chofi for out number two. Owen Ahern watching that one. Looked like he thought it was outside, but it wasn't the second strikeout looking in this inning. Easton Chofi doing a tremendous job on the mound. Here is Aiden Hallett. This pitch over the head of Hallett. Nice job behind the plate, if that's still Beamish back there to pick that ball up quick. Number 56 it is. Here's the 1-0. Hallett with a good eye. Not swinging at that one. When that ball's stopped back there, you just want to pounce on it quick as a catcher. Pick it up with your bare hand and take a look at where you got to gun it. The runner stayed at second base. 2-0 the count. Here's the pitch. Two outs here. <laughs> and that's in for strike number one. Two gone here in the bottom of the fifth. Runner on second is Van Ryswick. Can't say enough about Chofi. He had a big job to come in here and pitch to the top of the order. <laughs> and hasn't allowed a single run. And now he's got two strikes with two outs in the inning. Well, two and two now the count. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And like you said, Brett Chofi doing a fantastic job. And there's oh. strike number three. Three strikeouts all wow. looking here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Chofi giving his team a chance to get back on the bats and back in this game. That was so dominant. Aiden Hallen thought that ball was a little bit high, not happy about that, that call there. 
but three strikeouts looking in that inning, and he retired six of the seven batters that he faced. Take a look at this one again. Wow. <laughs> the look on his face. So no, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. So now an opportunity for O'Neill to close out this game. So that's 18. So he should be at 31 right now. So 31 pitches would put him at one day's rest which is pretty good for this team. I mean, to come in, look at that. You only have to take one day off. He came in, pitched two innings. He struck out three of the batters he faced. I just, yeah, again, can't say enough about the effort by Easton Chofi today. That was amazing. Well, and now they have to get on the bats. Jackson White, Tanner Ellick, Truex McNevin, all scheduled to hit here in the top of the sixth inning. And if we recap the day's action, earlier this morning, Otto West, Blanked Ancaster 10 0, and the Cornwall River Rats beat the Orleans Red Sox 2 to 1. So, East Nepean looking to go to 2 and 0 here this evening and join Otto West in the top spot. Cornwall is 1 and 1, as is Ancaster. Orleans is 0 and 2. And if Perth doesn't get something going on the bats, they will also be 0-2 early on in this tournament. If you saw that on camera on, there at on. home, just giving a heads up to the Perth Royals, they did not have a first base coach. There is a player out there now with their helmet on coaching first base. I doubt he'll be given the oh. signs though. <laughs> Good swing there by Jackson White. Jackson White at an infield single. That was one that was popped up to the second baseman, just in front of the second baseman, a diving effort, not able to get the out though. Got on base. And he gets a piece of that one. And Jackson's second at bat, a fly out to left field. So he's made some decent contact today, got on base once. The big hitters for this team though, really Finn Halpenny, Hal sorry, and Cameron White. The one and three hitters, and Easton Chofi as well, who scored two runs for this team. And those guys are are done. Unless you can mount some offense here at the bottom of the order, we're not going to be able to see Cameron White up again in this game. Good eye there by Jackson White. Looks at ball number two, two and two. Now the count. Hammond O'Neill, the pitcher, good job fighting that one off. To stay alive in this at bat. As Emmett O'Neill trying to close out this game. Here's the 2 2. A swing and a miss for out number three. As Jackson White goes down swinging. First time Jackson White does not make contact with the ball today. He slams his bat on the ground, not happy about the way that at bat ended the swing just underneath his bat it looked like there just missed that one great work here Emmett O'Neill throwing strikes same as Easton Chofi he's come in he got three outs in the last inning and now started this inning off with a strikeout Tanner Ellick now at the plate the right-handed batter down quickly, 0-2. Here's the pitch. Grounds that one right back to O'Neill. Makes the easy play over to first. And just like that, we have two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. East Nepean in a great spot here now. This is the number seven hitter, Truex McNevin. Up to bat, you have two outs in the inning, up by four runs currently. And this is it. This is the last shot for the Perth Royals to get some offense, get on base. Whatever it takes here. And McNevin looks at a called first strike. Here's the 0-1. Inside does a good job, but hits it right to the shortstop over to first for out number three. 
And that is it as the host East Nepean Eagles get on the bats, score six runs and allow only two and go to 2-0 and oh in this tournament. Great effort there by East Nepean. I mean, really by both clubs. And again, those second pitchers that came in, Easton Chofi and Emmett O'Neill pitching so well. Easton Chofi had 31 pitches in the two innings that he threw. And Emmett O'Neill had to come in and throw, I believe it was the last three innings that he threw in this game. So nice job by uh, by both of those last pitchers. And, and good defense. I mean, we saw some, some errors and some players able to advance on bags and score some runs with a few errors in this game. But we also saw some really good defense. I really liked what I saw at third base from, I think that was Emmett O'Neill. Nope, sorry, third base by uh, Chase Guthrie in this game. Great job, some nice hard throws over him and some great plays at third base in this game. Well, six to two, the final. You see it there on your screen as Perth heads off the field. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back to wrap things up right here on Rogers TV. We are back here at the Eagles Nest in Barhaven as the host East Nepean Eagles with a 6-2 victory over the Perth Royals. East Nepean goes to 2-0 in the tournament. Perth still looking for their first win. And you see the line score right there. Perth started this game early with a run in the first inning, but East Nepean came through with three in the bottom half of that inning and that's where we will start our highlight package yeah you said that first run in the the first inning Finn Finn Halpenny getting on base with that single to right field uh, he was able to uh, get on base sorry but Easton Chofi when he got on with a fielder's choice so he had Finn Hal Halpenny out at second base but he was able to score a run in that first inning but then three runs by East Nepean in the first inning as you mentioned to pull ahead three to one they added three more runs in the third inning, Perth Royals doing the same thing, scoring another run. So they had two runs total after three innings. But yeah, those three big spots, three big runs for East Nepean in both the first and the third inning uh, really just put the stamp on this game for them. And some good pitching late in the game. I want to mention that 52 pitches thrown total by Dante Saka. So he'll have to take that extra day rest now. He threw two pitches too many. Uh, so that's tough for the East Nepean team. But great job by those last pitchers that came in again, Emmett O'Neill and Easton Chofi to, to end the, the game for this, their teams. Well, and how about the, the, the job by the grounds crew to actually get this field in playable condition because the rain came down hard here. It looked as though we may not even get this one in, but they got it done. And the East Nepean Eagles also got it done. The big 6-2 to two victory. They're 2-0 and oh in the tournament. We will see... The Perth Royals again this week. We're back on the air at 1.30 on Tuesday afternoon as Perth face off against the other 2-0 team, the Ottawa West Twins. However, there are some games tomorrow. We'll have to see how those play out. Thanks to my partner, Brett Jewett, and all of the Rogers crew. My name's Colin Zappia. We'll talk to you again on Tuesday afternoon.